We're here with Tim Moore, the CEO of Haven Life Sciences, that's H-A-V-N on the C-S-E and H-A-V-L-F on the O-T-C. Can you give us an overview of Haven Life's strategy regarding functional mushrooms as well as psychedelics? Our thesis from the beginning is we saw an opportunity to um, provide naturally derived uh, psilocybin to the industry as opposed to synthetic. Um, the synthetic psilocybin, which is pretty much what everyone's using right now, has several drawbacks from our perspective. First of all, it's very expensive. Uh, it's seven to ten thousand dollars a gram, which seven million to ten million a kilogram. Uh, the second is it's only the isolate uh, compared to the mushroom, which has approximately three hundred compounds in it, and we believe it's naive to believe that it's only the psilocybin that has an, an effect. So by having naturally derived, we have the ability to deliver the isolate or a broad spectrum version of, of, the, of the extract. And then the third, third thing is patient preference. People that have rejected pharmaceuticals that are, are looking for psychedelic assisted therapy don't want a, a, a manufactured uh, constructed molecule, which frankly is grown on E. coli in a Petri dish. Um, they want a, a plant derived solution. And, and if you think of, um, uh, five years ago, approximately, synthetic THC was introduced, and it was going to revolutionize the cannabis industry. Nobody was going to build greenhouses anymore. Well, when was the last time you heard of somebody going in a dispensary and buying synthetic THC? The reason why you haven't, not because it was more expensive. It was actually cheaper, but that's not what people want. They wanted a plant-derived product, and, and that remains our model for psilocybin. We will be a supplier of plant-derived, naturally-derived psilocybin for the industry. We see that you've made a lot of partnerships and supply agreements. Can you go over and explain your strategic supply agreements and your distribution network as well? So we, we've signed supply agreements with three uh, distinct groups of customers. The first uh, are companies that operate retreats in jurisdictions where that is legal. So uh, Jamaica, Antigua, Costa Rica, and a few other places. The second group of customers are people like Atma Journey Centers, that operate psychedelic assisted therapy clinics, Atmas in, in uh, Calgary, Alberta. And they're the first company in Canada to legally administer psilocybin to a patient that held a, um, a, a compassionate use a, exemption license for end of life treatment. And then the third group and, and the largest group is are the companies that are conducting clinical trials that are gonna need hundreds or thousands of doses of psilocybin over the, over the course of their, of their trials. So our strategy is to, to support all of them. And, and you know, a metaphor you could use is we're selling picks and shovels to all of the gold miners. Um, so we're a bit agnostic about which one of them is successful. We're going to sell it to all of them and then eventually become a supplier to the formulators that do uh, have success in their new drug development uh, strategy. So that's that's been our approach that can continue to be our approach. We're working on more su supply agreements. Um, we're working on um, navigating the complicated uh, uh, regulatory rules to export to different jurisdictions, and we're having success along that path. Right, right. And with that success in different jurisdictions, can you explain uh, some of the issues you've had with navigating the regulations as it comes to psilocybin? First of all, let's start with psilocybin is not illegal. It's just highly regulated, like guns, alcohol, tobacco. They're not illegal, but they're highly regulated. And and so we look at those regulations as a barrier to entry. We we have the intellectual capital to navigate those rules, and we have the the ability to to, to get things done. But it is hard. So um, an example I give you is uh, last year when we were uh, working with Finra to get our DTC eligibility for the OTC, they they treated us like we were. Um, uh, you know, drug dealer, right? We're Walter, we're Walter White underneath a laundromat somewhere making, you know, uh, crystal meth. And it's no, 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 no. We're, we're a legitimate science company working under the FDA and DEA rules to, to do things. The same as any pharmaceutical company when they develop a new drug, they can't sell it until they've navigated the entire approval process. Psilocybin is the same way. You have the additional complication with psilocybin that Every time you want to move it, you need to get a permit from the DEA in the U.S. to move it from one license holder to another license holder. Um, and in Canada, you need to get approval from the uh, from Health Canada to move it from one location to another. So each individual transaction is regulated individually, and each uh, company that's operating has to have the appropriate licenses to do whatever they're doing, whether it's research or um, uh, production or manufacturing, whatever they're they're trying to accomplish, there's a unique license for that. So it, it does make it um, uh, complicated to navigate. But uh, like I said, 
those of us that are uh, able to do that, we actually embrace the rules as a, a barrier to entry and, and an opportunity to protect the investment that we make to get things done. So on the consumer side, what would you say is the market potential for functional mushrooms? The, the potential is huge. I mean, we're, we're um, uh, exploiting a, a well-established uh, consumer behavior. 74% of consumers take nutritional supplements on a regular basis. So for them to add a functional mushroom to that is an easy step. So somebody like me, I take tart cherry for my gout and I take glucosamine and chondroitin for my, my arthritis. So for me to add a, a lion's mane or a reishi or a shaga for, for some other purpose is a, an easy habit for me to develop. And, and there's a stickiness to this that when, when people start taking nutritional supplements, it becomes a recurring revenue model, frankly. So um, we're very excited in our partnership with Amazon. We're, we're on amazon.ca. Uh, that is showing uh, tremendous growth from a very small base, let me be clear. Um, and we're well on the path to getting listed at amazon.com. We expect to have that done in the next uh, four to six weeks, and that'll be a, a big increase as well. Um, the, the other growth is going to come from continuing to build out our, our retail footprint. We recently announced our partnership with Horizon as our distributor to uh, the natural health and, and um, grocery channels in Western Canada, and they'll be you know, building that sales out for us. Um, and we've added some retailers in Ontario as well as on Vancouver Island, and we'll just keep, we'll just keep building out our footprint. So we see tremendous growth opportunity. Functional mushrooms are the fastest growing segment in nutritional supplements and are projected to be a $34 billion category on a global basis by 2024. So we don't need a very large market share of that to have a fairly significant business. Excellent. So can you provide a strategic color on your acquisition of Venice Choice? You know, we were very fortunate to enter discussions with, with um, Matthew Bennett. Um, he's a very a smart scientist who developed these formulas, had them patented, uh, showed efficacy against traumatic brain injury and concussions, and was looking for a partner to help him to grow that business. And, and what made sense was for us to acquire the, 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 the patents and other assets from him um, and actually take Matthew on as our director of education so that we can exploit his, his background, both as a sports injury expert and his uh, training uh, in, uh, in naturopathy. So uh, Matthew will be helping us with consumer and retailer education. We'll be uh, rebranding his Bennett's Choice product to Haven Life and rolling that out uh, in the coming months. Um, we're also gonna be leveraging the fact that there are 18 professional sports teams that buy this product now and use it as part of their brain health uh, protocols. So we're gonna uh, really dive into the uh, sports, particularly contact sports uh, as an area for uh, finding new, new customers. And uh, we really, that, that, because it's a patented uh, formula and has shown efficacy, it's, it's really important um, to distinguish us from, from other players. And traumatic brain injuries and concussion is, is a massive problem on a global basis. Not, you know, it's not just football and hockey where you have it, but you know, uh, uh, basketball players, um, uh, cheerleaders. Like your cheerleading is one of the highest incident uh, concussion sports in college because you do it on a concrete floor or, or if, if, even if you're doing it on the football field, when you fall in the pyramid, all you hit on the way down is knees and elbows. Um, so um, there's a, a significant amount of, of head injury there, whether it's uh, automobile accidents, on the job accidents, whatever. So there's a lot of people seeking relief from concussions. And, and so we see a lot of potential there uh, for people that are looking for relief from the symptoms of, of a head injury. Yeah, those are definitely big issues to tackle. So as a final question, what are your key upcoming catalysts? You know, we've been, we've been very busy. I mean, we've, uh, we're, it's been 14 months since we went public and we've accomplished a lot, but what's coming in the next six months um, on the psychedelic side, the next uh, significant event will be the successful importation from Jamaica into the US. Uh, we, we expect that to happen before the end of this year. Uh, beyond that, it's gonna just be a matter of scaling up that that pathway and, and fulfilling those supply agreements and adding some more supply agreements to it. On the nutritional supplement side, uh, the, the next uh, significant catalyst will be the launch of functional foods, the rebranding of, of the Brain Evolve product to, to Haven Life for traumatic brain injury and, and concussions, and then the uh, build out of our retail footprint, including expanding to some international markets where we're in discussions uh, for partnerships to get into some, some other countries as well. So lots, lots of growth opportunity. 
we're very focused on delivering against that. And I hope to have some uh, specific news for you the next time we talk. Thank you.